Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is We've Got Issues. Our interviews today are taking place at Coquitlam Public Library, and we are on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of Coquitlam First Nation. So we'd like to thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lie above and below. Today I'm joined by Mark Norbury, who is a resident of Port Moody, and he's concerned with the effects of climate change. He's here today to talk to us about the Sioux Big Oil campaign. So thank Thank you for joining us today, Mark. Thank you for having me, Nancy. Can you tell us a little bit about the goal of the Sioux Big Oil campaign? What is it you're trying to achieve? Yes, well, many people today are rightly concerned about climate change, and but feel powerless to do anything about it. So um, the Sioux Big Oil campaign is raising a class action lawsuit against the oil companies. Now, these are rich and powerful companies, but they're still subject to the laws of the land. And so basically, the aim of the uh, Subi Gold campaign is twofold. First of all, to help the cities and municipalities to recover the costs of climate change. And these are very real costs um, through uh, climate adaption, climate mitigation. Um, and secondly, it, it creates um, an awareness and it helps to um, create a, a proper balance, a proper fairness, um, because the oil companies are making profits, they're making huge profits, um, but they, these profits are, don't take into account the, the costs to society uh, in general. Um, so there are huge costs involved with burning fossil fuels and uh, society in general is, is having to pay these costs. And so it addresses the fairness of the situation because although they're, they're making money, um, it's a it's not real money. Um, it's, uh, it's a false economy. Um, and so by raising a, a class action lawsuit, it actually addresses the unfairness of the situation. And so the oil companies actually pay the, the true costs for their products. That's a really interesting concept. You're talking about equity and fairness. Um, this is a class action lawsuit, which of course takes um, funding and a campaign takes funding. Can you tell us a little bit about who else is involved in this? Who are your partners? And also, where's the funding coming from to drive this campaign? Well, within Port Moody, um, the, the two main partners are the Laudato Si Circle of Port Moody, of which I am a member, and also Force of Nature in the Tri-Cities. Um, so these two organizations have been working together and it's a, a partnership that's been working really well. Uh, we have learned so much from them um, because they have such a great experience in just the whole area of environmental campaigning. And we are supported by the Secretariat, which are West Coast Environmental Law. They have um, lawyers there who actually have been working on the Subi Oil campaign across the whole of British Columbia. Um, so the three of us have been working well together. Um, but across the whole province, we have about um, 20 communities who are involved in the Super Gold campaign. And it's basically volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Um, most of the people involved are, are, are just unpaid uh, volunteers, just concerned citizens across uh, British Columbia. And in addition to that, we also have 40 endorsing and partnering organizations. Uh, you'll probably be familiar with the names, Fridays for Future, the Climate Emergency Unit, Neighbours United, Stand Earth, and the Union of BC Indian Chiefs. Oh, that's an interesting um, group of, of people that have come together for a common cause. You mentioned the Laudato Sea Circle. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Yes, the Port Moody Laudato Sea Circle was founded two years ago. Um, I was one of the co-founders. And uh, it's actually part of a global movement called the Laudato Sea Movement. Um, that's a, a Roman Catholic organization um, and it's inspired by Pope Francis' own teachings on the subject. Um, it's named after his encyclical that came out in 2015. Well, thank you, because I think that's one area where environmentalists, maybe we have fallen a little bit 
by the wayside in not including sort of the spiritual side to connecting people with nature and with the environment. So it's really nice to hear that you've been active in that and that there's something happening there. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, it's actually also working at the national level. So we have a national coordinator. Um, and yeah, so it works at all levels, global, national, and local. So we're actually based in Port Moody. Uh, we're actually based at uh, St. Joseph's Catholic Church, which is in Port Moody on Moody Street. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, one question I had was, you've been talking about this class action lawsuit, and this is um, where a lot of different partners are involved, and it, they can be very complicated and take a long time to resolve. And right now, we're in a climate crisis, and I was wondering, can you tell a little bit about, is this going to happen fast enough? Um, will we be able to see results and actions quickly enough? That's a very good question, Nancy. Thank you for asking that. Um, as soon as a class action lawsuit is filed, the oil companies have a responsibility to notify their uh, investors. And so that immediately sends a message to them of the financial and legal risk in, involved in uh, selling oil. Um, also, it's better to start now rather than waiting any longer. Um, we owe it to uh, our future generations to actually take action right away because as things go on, the climate change is going to exacerbate and, and, get, and get worse and worse. So we need to take action sooner rather than later. Um, but the other thing is big oil may actually choose to settle out of court and so it, it may actually take a lot you know, it might be a lot quicker than that. We, we may not have to wait years. But also, as all this is going on, um, as, you know, as, as this class action lawsuit is filed, um, it immediately creates awareness um, in the media and also in the, in the public in general. And so people start to become aware of what the oil companies have been doing over the last several decades. Um, it, it gets exposed, it uh, takes the lid off, they're, a misinformation campaign, um, and also it uh, it gets you know regular residents just to be more aware of what they themselves are doing in in terms of uh, climate change. So hopefully this will actually slow down climate change. Wow! Thank you for that really comprehensive and enlightening answer because there's so many reasons to do this that you've just mentioned, um, and I love the. the your point about that we need to take action now. We've been kicking the can down the road for a number of decades now, so it's really nice to see some accountability hopefully coming into play soon. You had mentioned, Mark, that there are a number of communities throughout the province, I believe, who are also involved in this lawsuit. Can you tell us a little bit about who those communities are? And also, um, can you tell us specifically why you chose to focus on Port Moody for your campaign? I know you're a resident, but is, is, if there's other reasons why you chose Port Moody. Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, so far to date, uh, three communities have actually gone ahead and, and uh, um, adopted the uh, class action lawsuit. Um, those are Gibsons, View Royal, and Squamish. Um, and so it, it, they've signed on, um, and there are several others who are considering doing so already. Now, I've lived in Port Moody many years, and I have noticed that our council is very good when it comes to climate action. Um, they are very climate change aware uh, in terms of a council. In fact, our present mayor, Megan Lati, was actually uh, involved in um, the Climate Action Plan, uh, which was published in 2020. So I have every confidence in the current council um, that they will go ahead and, and sign on to this, this lawsuit. Um, I think we have a very good chance uh, of that. Um, and also, other cities are in the sidelines. They're watching. Um, and we have very concerned citizens in some of the surrounding uh, cities, like Burnaby, uh, Surrey, uh, New Westminster, and even Vancouver. Um, so they're watching what happens here. And for myself, I like to think of Port Moody as the gateway city to the lower mainland. Um, it's, it's kind of appropriate that it is a port. Um, so we can think of it as a gateway. Um, because if it's successful here, then there's a good chance it will, be, it will start to become successful in some of the other cities in the lower mainland. 
Yeah, thank you for that. And I think we do owe kudos to Port Moody for being quite progressive when it comes to climate action and climate change. They do have a climate action plan that they've recently um, worked on and published and done some really good work. So um, I guess if can you talk a little bit about some of the effects that we're already seeing as far as climate change goes that are specific to Port Moody, what we're seeing now, some of the issues, and then also um, what can we expect to see if we don't take action? Um, yeah, well, the Climate Action Plan and the Extreme Weather Resilience Plan published by uh, Port Moody Council, um, they have identified the costs of climate change, which could be from anywhere from $1 million to $8 million. Um, so we've got to find that money from somewhere. Um, also, the Insurance Bureau of Canada um, says that BC as a whole is expected to pay $5.3 billion per year. Okay, that's not just one-off, that is per year over the coming years on climate adaption. So these are huge amounts of costs. And the way I think of the Super Bowl campaign is like an insurance premium. You know, I pay $2,000 per year for my house on, on, the, on the hope that you know, no tree is going to fall on it. But if a tree does fall on it, I can claim the cost back. But that's something that might happen. Um, so we can think of this as an insurance premium. So we're, paying, we're asking Port Moody to pay $36,000. That is a very small amount of money compared with the huge costs of climate change and mitigation and adaption that, that we are expecting. Um, and it, but it differs uh, in some ways from an insurance premium because with an insurance premium, it's, it's about something that might happen. We know that climate change is happening. It's something that will happen. Um, so for me, that's, that's a, a non-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Um, we're asking to pay $36,000 and we're going to receive back um, millions of dollars um, from the oil companies in, in terms of uh, fairness for the, for the cost of climate change. Yeah, I think almost you could think of it rather than insurance, almost as an investment in the future. And I know that Port Moody is um, replacing the boardwalk in a long sort of Rocky Point Park area. And because the waters and the tides are getting higher and we're seeing more extreme weather events, and uh, so there are like a lot of really um, you know, discrete things that we can see happening and changes happening. Can you tell us a little bit about the campaign? What have you done so far in the campaign? And also, what are you looking to do in the future to further the campaign? Yeah, I first got involved in the campaign last year. Um, and uh, I contacted uh, Force of Nature in October to gauge their interest in it. And they responded with a load of enthusiasm. And so I'm part of a, an environmental organization called the Laudato Sea Circle of Port Moody, as I've already mentioned. And so the two of us have been working together, these two partner organizations. Um, we put the delegation request to Port Moody City Council in December. Um, and then I was quite surprised when two days later I received a response from them saying that they claimed it was non-jurisdictional and so they rejected it initially. So this just means that it's not something that they have the authority over or decision-making capability over? That's right, that's what they thought. So that came as a complete shock and, and surprise to us um, because it clearly is jurisdictional. We're, we're talking about costs that the city is going to be paying out. And so we questioned that decision. Um, we didn't get any uh, justification for why they had decided it was non-jurisdictional. And one of the city councillors was very kind enough to retrieve the delegation request, and she proposed that it be debated. And so it was debated at the uh, Port Moody City Council meeting on the 23rd of January. Uh, we had a lot of supporters come out for that. Um, and we had a few people giving a two-minute speech about why it should be uh, regarded as jurisdictional. Um, and the vote was unanimous. Every single city councillor uh, said that, that it, they thought it was jurisdictional. And so that was, a, that was the last step. And now the next step is actually on the 13th of February when it will actually go to be debated itself. The actual delegation request will now go forward and it will be debated at the, um, the council meeting. And so we're inviting many people to come to City Hall at, uh, to that meeting. So come down at 6.30 p.m. on the 13th of February. Uh, we'll take some group photos and uh, the council meeting will start at 7 o'clock. 
Awesome. So you're welcoming other people to join by coming at 6.30 on February 13th to Port Moody City Hall. And then um, you can be part of the Sioux Big Oil Rally, and hopefully the delegation will be heard by council on that night. And then hopefully we can see some more progress after that. Um, now, Mark, so many people are concerned about climate change, but so many people just don't take action or don't feel that they, their actions matter. Can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you? I know you've talked about the Ladado Sea Circles. Can you tell us a little bit more about what inspired you to take action? Well, like many people today, I am seriously concerned about climate change because we as a species are, dis are destroying our own habitat. Um, this habitat that we depend upon for the basics of life, like food, uh, water, and shelter. Um, and thousands of people across the globe today are dying. Um, thousands of people die each year from climate change-related uh, effects, uh, like famine, drought, um, storms, and also th uh, millions of people more are, have the, had their lives uprooted through climate change. Um, and so it's a serious issue affecting the world today. We can think of it as another pandemic. And so uh, in the meantime, the oil companies are making huge amounts of profits. Um, now these oil, companies are very, these oil companies are very rich and powerful, but they are still subject to the law of the land. And Subic Oil Campaign is th being done through the legal system of, of the land. And so that's how it is very effective so for me, this is a way I can really make a change in the world. And I invite many other people to come and, and make a change as well. It sends a message to the shareholders of the oil companies. And for myself, I've been wanting to take part in some action that will have the most effect. And I see this as a good way to spend my spare time. Yeah, well, thank you. I think you're inspiring. You will inspire a lot of other people just to um, follow along with you because it sounds like it's a really nice partnership between Force of Nature, the Ladado Sea Circle that you lead, and also West Coast Environmental Law to um, pull together that legal end of things. Can you tell us if other people want to get involved in um, this Sioux Big Oil campaign, how can they contact you or what should they do in order to um, join forces with you? Several things. Um, first of all, sign the declaration. So go to subigoil.ca, go to the website, just click on the, the declaration. Um, very simple, but very powerful, very effective, because it's sending a message to our city councils and our municipalities that uh, people are concerned about this issue. Secondly, write to Port Moody City Council expressing your support of the campaign. Just a quick email is, is all, that, all that's needed. Um, thirdly, whether or not you actually live in Port Moody, come and join us on the 13th of February at 6.30 p.m. at the City Hall. Um, we're going to do some group photos, but just the numbers of people will, will, will show that people are concerned. We'll all be identified by our green armbands, um, and it will show to the City Council that there are residents who are really concerned about this issue and uh, are trying to encourage them to, 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 to come on to the class action lawsuit. But even if you don't live in Port Moody, uh, please uh, send a message, write an email, send a letter to your own city council and get them to join the class action lawsuit. This campaign is across the whole of BC. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. And I will see you at the Sioux Big Oil um, rally on the 13th. And I just thank you so much for taking the time to come and share with us a little bit more about this campaign. You're welcome. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining us. This is We've Got Issues, and we've been talking to Mark Norbury, who has um, shared with us some information about the Sioux Big Oil campaign. Thank you.